So hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Hi. An absolute pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Um, maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to your film. For people who don't know anything about All My Friends Hate Me, what can they expect? So yeah, it's a, it, feel horrible. It's yeah, it's a very dark comedy about social paranoia. Um, guy gets invited to a, a birthday party that his old uni friends have organised, and um, one by one they all sort of slowly turn against him. And he's not sure whether maybe it's because he did something wrong at uni that they're punishing him for, or maybe it's this weird joke he's not part of, or it's just in his head, and it kind of goes from there and sort of yeah descends into even more sort of paranoia and dread and doom. Yeah, it's it's a great date movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, it was so so well done. I mean, really uncomfortable to watch, but but so apt. And I don't know whether it's because I'm also of a similar generation, you know, having been at university way back when and having to go to social gatherings like weddings, things like that. I can really, you know, it really seems to pinpoint that social anxiety that yeah. feels like very mm. prevalent in our society right now. Yeah. Um, but where did you first get the idea? Uh, well, uh, loosely, I, it was sort of what got us talking was this experience I had where I'd been invited to a, um, a, a wedding by two old uni mates who I'd slightly sort of drifted apart from, and I was a bit surprised to get the invite, um, but yeah, pleasantly surprised. But then I, I foolishly went out the night before, so I was feeling quite fragile, and um, and during the day, yeah, I just became convinced, basically, that I'd been invited as a joke. And um, during the speeches, I thought the groom was going to announce that it was hilarious that I had thought I was really invited. And I told Tom, and he was like, well, that's the most narcissistic thing I've ever heard, that you would think someone else's wedding was all about you. Um, but yeah, it just felt like a, that was fun. That was kind of funny to us, but also a bit horrific and felt like a good, a good way into a story um, that could that could be like a horror film in someone's head. Okay. And can you tell us a bit about how did you decide to put together this amazing ensemble cast? Of course, <coughs> and you taking on the lead role, and then Andrew coming on to direct. Well, I was yeah. just very cheap. Um, yeah, <laughs> so that was that, that was that one sorted. That um, got me through the door. But no, I would say it was Andrew coming on board that really kind of attracted the cast. He's just such a well-respected. Um, director in the comedy world and 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 the the TV world in general, um, and then um, I think Charlie Clive was the per first person we got on board, and then it just went from there. And and every actor we managed to get, you know, not only were just high quality in, in their own right, but they just seemed to perfectly nail the characters and and bring them to life in ways that we we couldn't have even imagined when we wrote them. So we were so lucky to have that whole crew on board. Yeah. And the location itself seems really crucial. I don't know if you've also seen Alex Garland's Men recently, but it feels like there's that same sort of creepy feeling about these like, countryside properties. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that also feels like it was really crucial to the way the film was put together and, and how the cast interact and also the way the film was shot. So we can yeah. talk a bit mm. about that. Like yeah, well, you, yeah, you always say that the, that the house, you feel like it's mocking, mocking me. I guess it's a good way, because Pete's so desperate to sort of not appear posh, it's quite funny that he is constantly surrounded by this kind of decadent, neo-gothic like beautiful environment um, all the time so it's like you can never really escape and then I guess it's it's like it's just a good sort of place to it's a big spooky house you know it's yeah. kind of it's just gonna add a little bit of something um, yeah yeah it just adds a lot of spectacle and and depth and yeah yeah for, for the cinematographer it was a real kind of reason for him to come on board to shoot it in that way and it's just so funny to reveal it um, with Darude Sandstorm sort of playing as a backing track. It's just always yeah. nice to kind of clash those two worlds of the old posh and these kind of like obnoxious new kind of like, uh, yeah, students from the past. And did you have to do many rehearsals? Because I think the thing you feel mm. a bit like, um, you know, Pete going into that house is that group of actors, they look like they've been friends for years and they have this kind of um, ease with each other mm. and shorthand and as does the audience like Pete sort of feel um, outside of that. So yeah. how did you manage to get those actors to, to look like that on screen? They, we really, I mean they were just really good actors. Mm. I, I yeah. don't know, yeah, they were just, we got really lucky yeah. um, and, and sorry, what, yeah. And so just so dedicated, I think they just put a lot of time into their into their backstories and, and like all this detail that we hadn't really put in the script but they were able to sort of say okay when exactly did I get to know Pete and like when are we making this plan about Pete and all this stuff all this action that was happening off screen they were brilliant at kind of building that in and I think that really shows through in those ensemble yeah. moments and they were getting on really well probably you know without me and that really helped me just feel 
separate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's you, sorry, talk no. about um, kind of the genre and the tone, because I just think that's really crucial to this film. Mm. Like, some of it really does almost feel like a thriller, because we're wondering, yeah. is there something else going on mm. here? Is there another layer to this? But also the very specific British awkwardness that you just seem to encapsulate so mm. well. Yeah. Um, so did you have any influences when putting together the film, and how did you want to tread that line between the different sort of genres and tone? Yeah, totally. Well, well the, 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 the main film we were always coming back to was um, Force Majeure, a uh, Ruben Oslin film, and, and it, it just felt like in that film he was able to take something um, sort of from the Sort of seemingly trivial and from the from the from a sort of mundane experience and just like stretch it out and expand it to a to a kind of epic dramatic um, level and we were really always trying to chase that idea that something so small like Pete deciding whether to do his top button up or not just actually in Pete's head was just blown out out, out of proportion into this mm. kind of like you know epic moment. Yeah, um, it felt funny to take you know the stakes of a horror film and apply them to very small like moments um, and and also films like Festen as well um, just you know films that manage to feel incredibly tense but there's never like any blood spills I mean there were kind of some slightly more horror endings that we like play, played with and it just felt like a good challenge to try and make keep it all real world um, but still try and create something that felt as you said like a bit thriller thrill thrillerly hmm. thrillerly Thr yeah it's a tough word. Um, I mean, there must have been some scenes that you did find really difficult or mm -hmm. challenging. I don't know. Like, maybe on some of the levels, it is just the social awkwardness, and then other ones, it's more like physical kind of cringe comedy. Were any sort of like moments you found hardest? Yeah, running to the car, uh, and I and I had I had the flu, such a trooper, that day. Um, and and like, yes, yeah, running up that hill into the car, and and I don't drive. Uh, I didn't drive at the time, and it was your car, and so I I was like. There was the added pressure of like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to start this thing uh, when I get to it, but we had to keep, you know, that was, it, Andrew was really specific about it being one take of me running to the door and he kind of wanted um, Hugo, my cousin who played um, the, the, the guy in, in the car to like catch up and it was just a lot of timing issues and I about had to do it six times and, and I don't think I could have done it one more time and, and the last time we got it. But we forced him basically, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what do you hope people take away from watching it? Because like I said at the beginning, you do sit there, you do squirm, but it does seem to really kind of highlight a lot of issues. I don't know whether it's that generational thing of times have moved on and we don't know where we fit in anymore. Um, you know, people who are privileged kind of feeling that guilt mm. or um, discomfort mm. about where they are in the world. Um, you know, what does it have to say to them? Well, yeah, I think, I mean, that uh, it's a bit of a cringe uh, phrase, but sort of post-truth age that we live in maybe, that it, it's hard. Facts, objective facts, seem harder to like get, grab a hold of, and I, I think that includes sort of facts about ourselves and and like having a, a solid sense of identity now might feel more tricky, you know, with social media, the sort of images of ourselves that we portray, and so yeah, in in in, in Pete's case, sort of all these um, things are floating around like like guilt and stuff that are just stopping him from sort of having an identity. Um, mm. And I don't know if that's if that says something about a wider thing that's going on or, or not, but it felt true to the kind of message of the film. Yeah, there's definitely a lot about people presenting themselves in different ways to how they truly are, and I think that should be some kind of discussion point about, you know, are we on Pete's side or not? Because even though he's trying to do the right thing, is he kind of trying to do it in, in a quite fake and forced way? And uh, uh, yeah, that would be sort of an interesting takeaway. Mm. And interesting in the context, if we look at who's in power at the moment, probably yeah. their background. Yeah. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's more of a, I think, he's Boris more of an, is more an of an Archie. Archie. Yeah. yeah. Whether whether Boris sits on a bed and, and like, cries in, in in private, I I hope so. Very possibly, <laughs> very possibly. <laughs> yeah. uh, and just very quickly, obviously, you cut your teeth kind of at the end of a fringe, now you're onto this film, do you know what you're going to do next? We were thinking a, a Christmas movie. Mm. We want to cash in on the Christmas thing. Yeah, um, upper class, repressed family, yeah. uh, tense, interpersonal, paranoid dynamics. Yeah. Um, that's that's it, uh, the jolly time of Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all that with us. Can't Great. wait for everyone else to see you. Thanks very time. much. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.